Well, let's go to the player ratings. The game of football ended yesterday 0-0. I did the match reaction. You know, I was really dozy. I would have gone ahead to take the Ateta's reaction for like 30 minutes or an hour, but I couldn't because I felt like, oh, I was really dozing off and really went ahead to obviously end that video. So, happy Easter Monday to all the Christians. And it's still another holiday in action and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily we want to hit 20 21,000 subscribers before the end of i think uh this week that we're gonna hit to start and say to it that we really hit another milestone the muslims ramadan mubarak and J Juma, not Juma Karim, it's Barak Lawthikom for really watching this channel. We thank everybody who has been part of this journey and it's the 1st of April, which happens to be a fool's day. And I'm asking myself how people are going to fool people <coughs> when it's obviously uh, an Easter Monday, you know, a day after Jesus when he resurrected from the dead and you come out and really start to, to lie onto people. That is really unacceptable and I hope it doesn't really happen. And people who are really going to lie because it's fool's day, Please, 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 please. First and foremost, just weigh your lies. Because if you don't weigh your lies, then it's really going to act out as a shocker. People lose their lives. People are not in the betterment of their health. So if I told you just come out and really say things that are not really calculated, <clears throat> you might see people sent into their graves before they're supposed to go there so don't really spread lies that are really gonna shock people to the bone marrow now let's see close to 400 likes mark in this video and continue to do the needful as you talk to me onto this channel now it has been it was a draw at etihad but as not i hate to put up a very brilliant display and i think that was the plan of Mikel Teta. he defended for his lives and the defenders and the players at Arsenal did him the needful. I told you that the reason as to why I really gave Arsenal a go in this game of football was that I watched the game of Man United and Man City. If Man United had a little bit of more quality, like Arsenal had on the bench, Man City was going to obviously fall on the sword of Arsenal at Etihad. The problem was Arsenal never went ahead to score a goal. But if at all Arsenal went ahead to score any goal, Man City was done and dusted because you never saw anywhere Man City was going to get a goal. Even the corners, they're really weak. Everything Man City was weak and they tried to open up Arsenal, but that back line of Arsenal where was really was really solid and there is no way Arsenal would have gone and there is no way Man City would have gone ahead to obviously penetrate through them. So when you talk about quality, Thomas Pate off the bench. Martinelli off the bench, um, Tomiyasu off the bench, you know, and all those players that came on were really great. Leandro Trossard off the bench, very, very good player, and I think his style of play was really good. So that is it coming in through, and let's get to the player ratings and really rate these players as we think they deserve to be rated. Now, goalkeeper David Raya, for me, I was not impressed. A little bit because he was not tested a lot but his ball distribution <coughs> was really off on the night yet one of the things that would have gone ahead to rescue Arsenal would have been the press resistance of this goalkeeper acting as a reference point but every time he was used as a reference point he was like fidgeting and he really made a lot of slips when he was really hitting that ball and it was just luck um it was just luck um, surrounding Arsenal, you know, all ensuring Arsenal for that ball not to fall onto the player of Man City in a very deadly area. So I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10 for me because the match kept a clean sheet, but it was not so much on him. It was so much onto Man City, not really breaking down that backline of Arsenal that made it hard for Man City to really break through them six out of ten for me and i'm giving him a six because he kept a clean sheet if he never kept a clean sheet i would have gone ahead to say it that i give even him below and as soon as i had to get a point <clears throat> benjamin white i remember he went ahead to put in like two or three beautiful crosses and that's what I've gone ahead to see him improve in the past five games of Arsenal. And there is something that Benjamin White has gone ahead to work on, especially in his forward play. When he look at how he played against Brentford, he put in two assists. You know, against Man City, 
yesterday you remember that ball that he really went ahead to really get into the box in the first half and uh, Kai Havertz shipped it to sorry brushed it to find Jesus and Jesus went in for side net you know was really great was really great and there was another one that came in through to Yakub Kivio Yakub Kivio played it back to find Jesus and Jesus went ahead to do lots of touches and hit that ball and it went into corner so Jesus had like three four shots at goal of Man City but Benjamin White really had a very good play into that I'm giving Benjamin White a seven out of ten very good play defensively he was solid <clears throat> first he closed down Foden and Foden was taken off because he was pocketed by Benjamin White that is it hate him or love him Benjamin White pocketed Foden and Foden had nothing to do in that entire game of football then later they brought on Jack Grealish and he did the same thing you know he pocketed him and Jack Grealish couldn't really open up that Benjamin White side so for me I'm giving Benjamin White a 7 out of 10 we go to Jakub Kivio at the start of the game I think he was a little bit rusty he put out like two blind passes but he later settled into the game very well and closed down that high because Bernardo Silva was like trying to really go past him but he was really helped a lot by the tracking back of Gabriel Jesus into that game of football and I think Ateta was like telling Jesus we're here to defend and because of your energy you're supposed to be really available every time you really do the needful and I'd like to tell this message to the United fans that say I will have an agenda on to Marcus Rashford Jesus is a better player than Marcus Rashford and he's a quality player but look at how he tracks back he tracks back not until they really get back that ball but these players of Man United Rashford in particular he doesn't track back like that so I really believe Jakub Kivio went ahead to put in a very good goal but before I really get you the rating of Jakub Kivio allow me show you how Benjamin's game was by numbers into the game a hundred percent tackles won five clearances three crosses one key pass one block and he was really so flawless into that right back position of Arsenal Jakub Kivio later settled in he closed down Bernardo Silva then he brought in Jeremy Doku and he was there for some minutes and then he was taken off for Tomiyasu to come on through to obviously uh, continue from there and for Jakub Kivio you give him a very good uh, applause because this guy has gonna hit to play in his first <coughs> big game away from home you know in the Premier League so they've just brought him in he has gone ahead to prove that he's a starter in that side of Arsenal left back very solid and he went ahead to put in a shift that is Jakub Kivio for me and he went ahead to do the needful in there so for me I'm really excited for him and it takes a 6.5 out of 10 from my rating table go to the central defense Gabriel Magales oh my god you know he defended Haaland one next thing that Haaland lost his head Haaland lost his head and try to really play what we call the mind game i try to piss you off such that you lose your concentration and what i liked about gabriel magalese that game was the energy <coughs> the bad energy that haaland was trying to obviously take to him reciprocated it to haaland so haaland was like trying to quarrel and gabriel magalese was like telling him i'll do the same thing to you i find you on the ball you get you know Haaland is a bully he tried to bully Saliba and Gabriel Magales and none of those gave him a chance to obviously bully him so it shows you how these two came prepared for him remember when they played at Emirates last season Haaland went ahead to bully Gabriel Magales and I think Gabriel Magales was not in the proper position on the proper sense but this time round he has gone ahead to improve hugely and it takes a 7.5 out of 10 for me that is Gabriel Magales we go to William Saliba for him he was really all over the place he was really all over the place and he did lots of things onto that game and i'm not gonna come out and really explain what he did I'm, i just want to come in here and really show you his game by numbers then the rest of the rest will come in later a hundred percent tackles won 100 percent rebels completed 25 passes completed eight ball recoveries six out of six ground duels won five clearances three out of three tackles won <coughs> one block 
and this man went ahead to close down Haaland. And to show you how good this central this central defense was, look at the game by numbers for Erling Haaland. 64% passing accuracy, two shots off target, one big chance missed, zero shots on target, zero chances created, zero assists, zero goals, and that's how Saliba went ahead to obviously hunt down this guy, and he couldn't obviously live up to what he thought would have been a very good game for you. And more stats have gone ahead to be thrown in by these two. First and foremost, it's coming in through, but before I even go there, let me give Saliba a 8.5 out of 10. To me, he deserved an 8.5 out of 10 as a rating. Now, Statement Devers continued and told us that since his Premier League debut, William Saliba has been dribbled past just five times in 53 league games for Arsenal, fewer than any other CB in that period. Minimum 20 tackles versus dribblers. That is um, Saliba for you, making that brick wall looking great of Arsenal at the back. And we've been told again, Erling Haaland has failed to score and have a shot on target against Arsenal in his last three appearances. In the FA Cup in the Community Shield, in the home game where Arsenal beat Man City by on goal to nail, and yesterday, and that's how Arsenal went ahead to frustrate this man, and that's how good that central defense pretty went ahead to look. Then, Statement Dev told us again that William Saliba and Gabriel Magalhães are the first centre-back pairing in the Premier League to restrict Erling Haaland home and away to zero shots on target in a single season. This is the best central defence pairing in the Premier League. I've went ahead and really said this. Now, Arsenal fans, if you can stop Erling Haaland from doing that, do you think Harry Kane can come out and obviously be a threat to you guys? I doubt. So, Saliba... 8.5 out of 10 for me. That's what I really get him, and that's what he really takes home. I go to the other player, Declan Rice. Interceptions, the energy, he was really huge, and he takes a 7 out of 10 for me in this rating. Declan Rice was really great. In the entire game, he played as a number 8, but you needed his energy like that because you really understand how he's going to really come up and really do the box-to-box -box role and really he makes those late runs sometimes his recovery pace is really really unreal when you look at him man city sometimes broke through the midfield and from nowhere this guy was available to obviously stop those runs and he was really exquisite on the night seven out of ten for me i go to Jorginho. oh my god people would say he was invisible but he did a lot of work in that midfield to stop Man City from operating in the midfield. If you watched my match reaction, I told you Man City concentrated, on, concentrated so much on their wide play than the midfield play. Even the Kevin De Bruyne were not given a chance to operate in the midfield. The Rodriguez, you know, every time they got that ball, <coughs> Arsenal made sure there were enough bodies to force them to play or to pass that ball in the wing. And the best they could do in the wing is to put in crosses. Each and every time they put in cutback crosses, there were very many Arsenal bodies at the age of the 18 yards box area. They couldn't really find or be given shooting space. Every time they tried to shoot, there was an Arsenal player who was trying to really put in a shift to stop this player from doing the needful. So for me, Jorginho, a 7 out of 10 for me. He takes it. <coughs> he takes it hugely. The other brilliant player on that field of play that was really lessly talked about and not given his flowers was Martin Odegaard. First and foremost, one of the constants, one, one of the constants from Odegaard that you will ever get, that is a bare minimum and a given, every time he's on the field of play, he's work rate. He ran to an extent that I felt like he could be taken off the field of play because even in the 90th minute, his body language was like... <clears throat> I want to run, but I can no longer run. That is it. So, Odegaard did a lot defensively and even going forward. He had a lot of things to do. I think he released Gabriel Jesus. I think at the beginning of the second half, he released Trossard. There is when he released, is it Bukayo Saka? He did his job as a number 10. And that's why I tell you that he's the best number 10 in the league. If someone follows me onto the United Matters channel, I've gone ahead and really told people that look at how Odegaard plays. That's how a number 10 should be playing, the likes of Kevin De Bruyne. But I dismiss the number 10 qualities of Bruno Fernandes any day. I dismiss them because he doesn't help the team of Man United. Odegaard takes a 7.5 out of 10 for me. He really had 
a lot to do <coughs> into that game and I really went ahead to really love what he did. Bokayo Saka, the manager telling us that he trained just one day, he came and put his body on the line, taken off for Gabriel Martinelli, he takes a 6.5 out of 10 for me because he did what he had to do in his uh, in his reach because he rarely got on the ball but he liked the way he defended you know it was like Mikel Arteta had gone to these players that we have to defend for our lives and that's what they did and a lot went into their vicinity so they went ahead to really get that point and Saka tracked back very well 6.5 out of 10 for me Gabriel Jesus people call him wasteful but this time round I think he got onto the ball very many times and um, at the beginning of the game was it the second half right there was a cross that was put in is it by Bokayo Saka but he was obstructed by Akanji and he couldn't obviously meet that ball um, he had close to four three chances at the goal of Man City and he was really very 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 sharp like a story came up in the sun on Saturday that he looks sharp in the training session and the manager was like considering to obviously start him and he sort of it that the manager said let me start Gabriel Jesus has a number sorry as a left forward and um, uh, how Havertz who led the line Jesus 7.5 7 out of 10 Kai Havertz I liked the way he was really working hard you know running deep in the midfield and making himself available on the line and he did a lot he did a lot he was one of those people that never really got a chance but he really played very well he gave that central defense of uh jesco vadio and um ruben diaz a very huge work to do and that was kai havertz for you and in my rating he takes a seven out of ten we go to the substitutes thomas Pate. thomas Pate, guys Pate was parting all over. When he came on, you saw to eat that he saw Man City, you know, and he was like making those checkmates. He was really reading the game very well. He won the L duels, the grand duels, and Thomas Pate did a lot into that game of football. But I tell you, if Arsenal never had a Thomas Pate onto their game or to the pitch, it would have been hard for them to win the to win the game in the last minutes because there is the way Pep Guardiola went ahead to really get on players Jack Grealish, Jeremy Doku and very many others on the field of play to really increase the tempo but every time Thomas Pate got that ball and intercepted it do you know what he did? He cooled down the game. <clears throat> he cooled down the game and in the so in the so called process of him cooling down the game he found himself at a certain point of really being the initiator of what would have gone ahead to be a goal if at all Trost had went ahead to really go in for a quick pass down onto the right where Martinelli had gone ahead to make a very good run in there. So I'm gonna give Thomas Pate a seven out of ten. He really looked good. A Trossard seven out of ten for me. Uh, he was really deadly, press resistant as usual, and you could trust him with the ball any time round you gave it to him so he takes a seven out of ten gabriel martinelli returning from injury but he never really looked far off and he really tracked back very well he just lacked those balls that would have gone ahead to see him really create himself a possible way to win that beautiful game of football and that is gabriel martinelli for you 6.5 out of 10 for me that for gabriel martinelli who else came on tommy yasu mr solid he was really solid. He solidified that left back position of Arsenal and stopped every player of Man City to come in through to do the need. But I think those were the players that really came on, came off the bench. Therefore, Tomiyasu, um, Trossard, Martinelli, and Thomas Pate. No one else came on through, you know. I would like to give Mikel Arteta credit. I'm giving him a 7.5 out of 10 for obviously managing that game. Because not him, let no one lie to you that there is a team that can go at Man City and try to obviously play them off the park. No way. No way. You have to play like Arsenal, defend a little bit, and hit them on 
the break that's how you can really find yourself beating the side of man city and i really went ahead to check the position that man united had when they are playing man city it was 27 percent and even arsenal had 27 percent on the night that is it so my man of the match william saliba obviously as very many have gone ahead obviously do the needful saliba and odegaard who are my two standout players into that beautiful game of football so thank you for watching in through rock and david is my name go into the comment section tell me who your man of the match is and rate these players who do you think i've gone ahead to rate badly or i've gone ahead to overrate i cover you all in the precious blood of jesus christ and may the living to god bless you abundantly rock and david is my name I sign out for now. See you later as the Muslims. Ramadan Mubarak. Ciao, ciao.